Our main focus is on the microbiome in a, in a child's GI tract and the effects that has on allergic outcomes and also what factors affect the composition of the gut microbiome in kids. We have a number of different uh, presentations and analyses that we did. Uh, several of them are um, related to what contributes to the establishment of the uh, uh, composition of the uh, microbiome in children, in, in, in babies. Uh, we found a number of environmental factors were important and behavioral factors. The most important one was breastfeeding, uh, but other ones were also important, such as mode of delivery, um, uh, endotoxin in the house, um, whether the baby was first born, um, and if breastfeeding was exclusive, things like that. Then we also did some studies where we were looking at um, some outcomes related to different gut microbiome patterns, and we found that um, a, the IgE to a vaccine was uh, the response, IgE response, varied by the microbiome, and um, we found that nocturnal asthma was related to certain patterns and um, also symptoms of uh, reported allergy to pets. We've, we've, for several decades now, been following these birth cohorts in Detroit and have always seen these unusual, sort of unexpected things associated with disease. Like, um, actually sometimes breastfeeding is associated with higher risk and sometimes with lower risk. And I think now we're starting to figure out what's the underlying reason for this, for all these factors being related, and that it's the key thing is that baby's ecology uh, in the gut. And so now, you know, we're just trying, we have to drill down and see what's really going on and what patterns are important. It's, it's actually, I think, making sense that we're going past these other markers of, of the microbiome and find out the real mic microbiome, and that we can do because you can measure it now. Well, breastfeeding, it turned out, was certain, certainly something we were interested in, but it, it dominated the factors. Uh, at, we looked at um, microbiome by looking at stool samples in these babies at about one month and about six months. And at both time points, um, whether the mom was breastfeeding at that time was the most important factor. And um, it just seems to contribute to a particular type of microbiome. We were thinking that the uh, environmental microbiome, if it's very diverse, which would go along with the hygiene hypothesis that, you know, a little dirtier is good, we thought that would result in a more diverse baby's microbiome early on, and it doesn't. It's actually more of a, um, we think with the, somehow the complex environment results in a uh, baby's early patterns not being as diverse and sort of postponing the acquisition of an adult um, assemblage of, of bugs. You know, we've always looked at bacteria. I think people look at it as the enemy and really what it is is you want to get a good relationship with your, with your bacteria you're carrying around with you. There, I think there's a lot of potential for intervention here. So once we figure out what, what really is going on, what microbes are, are important, there's probably a few that are really important because there's thousands of them, so which ones really matter? And there's just a lot of potential that you could, you could assess if a baby's gut microbiome is not optimal and then you might be able to intervene and, and fix it either through um, diet or environmental um, uh, factors. I think allergy is like the first signal of, of a messed up microbiome and that really it's going to matter for all kinds of diseases, adult diseases even, chronic diseases, and, and it's kind of neat to be working on this area because I think it's going to have a huge impact.